The legislative session was interrupted by a weeks long walkout that had lawmakers passing bills late into the day. Let's get to Mike Benner in Salem. Mike, legislators must be relieved tonight. Yeah, no question about it, Art. This legislative session will be remembered for years to come and not necessarily for the right reasons. I'm, of course, talking about uh, the lengthy walkout. It caused a lot of headaches, but at the end of the day, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are proud of the work they accomplished. First, it was the Senate, and moments later, the House. On Sunday afternoon, Oregon State legislators officially wrapped up the 82nd legislative session. I'm not sure I'll be able to remember the session tomorrow. I'm so exhausted right now. Right. Senate President Rob Wagner will certainly remember this session. After all, it was interrupted by a six-week walkout, the longest in Oregon history and the second longest in U.S. history. At the center of the Republican-led protest, a piece of legislation aimed at expanding access to abortion and gender-affirming care. There were certainly challenging times and disagreements over policy and how our democracy is set to function. To make up for time lost during the walkout and to abide by the state constitution that prohibited the legislative session from continuing past Sunday, lawmakers were very busy last week and this weekend, powering through a pile of still pending legislation. I had plenty of nervous moments and I can't deny being on the edge of my seat today. Dwight Holton is the CEO at Lines for Life and a big proponent of the 988 Implementation Act, or House Bill 2757, passed by the legislature in the nick of time. We are really excited about this. This is the single most important piece of suicide prevention legislation ever in Oregon. So the thing, single most important thing this act does is provide long-term stable funding for the work of 988. 988 is the new national crisis helpline. The legislature also pushed through some climate resilience bills, as well as House Bill 2395, making the opioid overdose reversal drug naloxone more broadly available. And then there's this. We took housing affordability straight on and homelessness, and we worked diligently to keep our community safer, safer from crime and gun violence. Certainly something to be proud of, but Senate President Rob Wagner won't allow himself to get caught up in the accomplishments. He knows the work never stops. There's more to do, and he's eager to get after it. I'm really hoping that coming out of this, it's a little bit more of a jeans and t-shirt and getting out into community and getting to know people at a human level. Republican lawmakers did not make themselves available for on-camera interviews, but I can tell you Senate Republican leader Tim Kinnob did release a statement calling the actions of Democrats unlawful, uncompromising, and unconstitutional. He says he and his colleagues did manage to protect the rights of parents and law-abiding gun owners in what was a tumultuous session. As far as when lawmakers will be back on the Senate and House floors, not for months. The next legislative session, a short one, is slated for early February. Reporting in Salem, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News.